So in this video, which is going to be the my last video on uh, developing models for for spatially point referenced data, um, I'm going to talk about uh, Markov random field models. And as a reminder, uh, these are the the 2D analog of of state space models. And state space models, we had a process model that was describing how a process evolves in time. In Markov random field models, you're now talking about places where you have a process model that describes how things are evolving in space. So that's one thing that really separates uh, this approach of spatial modeling from uh, those based on spatial covariance, is that there is some spatial component to the uh, process model. Now that spatial component could be that you have a model that is truly spatial, you know, where there's actually a prediction of spatial flux, such as a dispersal term or a diffusion term or a convection term uh, as part of your process model. Uh, or it could just be that there's some component uh, that connects you to your nearest neighbors uh, based just on the process error. So you, you can work with a non-spatial process model where the connection is in the, in the process error, or you could work with a truly spatial process model. And like we had in the uh, state space models, we are observing y, uh, and the x's that we're modeling are latent. We never actually ob directly observe the true process. We're observing y with some observation error. Uh, the other thing that's notable about Markov random fields is that in the spatial version, of these models, uh, y tends to be much more sparse uh, than it is for time. So in time, you might have a few missing data points, uh, but you observe most of them. By contrast, in in space, you know you might have a whole uh, large spatial gridded domain uh, that you're making uh, inferences about. But very often, uh, in this context of of thinking about spatial point pattern data as opposed to spatial aerial data, like remote sensing, thinking about spatial point data, you usually only observe data at a few of those points. So you're relying a lot on the spatial smoothing and the spatial process uh, in a Markov random field model. You also end up with a lot of latent variables to estimate. Uh, that said, they, they are, you know, they're easier, they can be easier to implement uh, than spatial Covariance models and, and they definitely avoid uh, the challenge of having to uh, write down and invert that large spatial covariance model matrix. Uh, so I'm not actually going to show the implementation of a Markov random field model. I'm just going to walk through a couple examples and uh, specifically I'm going to draw on, on examples uh, from this older paper by Herbie Lee. Uh, it was looking at um, you know, the flow of media through a porous media, and specifically um, flow, flow of fluid through soils is the, the archetypal example here. So we're, we're considering an example uh, where what we're measuring is flows through, through soils, lateral flows through soils, and what we're trying to reconstruct is a map of the permeability of that soil. Mm -hmm. And so um, how this is often done uh, in, in the real world is you have uh, some injection well, and you have some stations that are either monitoring uh, for that concentration of what's being injected. It might be a dye or it might be a radionucleotide. Um, and then uh, you could also have places that are pump actively pumping uh, fluid out. I'll say fluid because often we're talking about water plus you know whatever is in the water that's the actual tracer we're able to monitor. So I believe in this example, these plots represent time series data coming from uh, the four corners and then the midpoints of the edge. And there was an injection um, at the center. And you know what we we're measuring is an injection injection occurs at time zero. And then what, is, what are the concentrations we observe at different locations? So we actually only have, we have time series data, but we only have time series at uh, 
nine points and we're trying to infer this whole grid. And most of the information that comes out of this time series data is actually this time of first arrival. So when does uh, this tracer, how long does it take this tracer to get here? So you can see the times uh, to these edges where the distances are smaller tend to be quicker. Uh, and then the times uh, to the corners tend to be longer, but they uh, can vary a lot between you know, this diagonal uh, from the center to here, which takes you know, time less than 30, is very different from this, from the center to the, the zero, zero comp component that takes almost 50, um, showing that the permeability in that direction is much higher than the permeability in the other direction. So the question would be, can, can you actually reconstruct uh, this, uh, in this case, this is a simple simulated data experiment just to pr show if, if this works. Can you reconstruct this map just by measuring things at the point and, and then assuming a, a process model that describes um, what's actually going through this? So the process model here is one of, of hydrologic flow um, with some process error and it's being fit in, in the, again, this 2D analog of a state space model. And so here we have a map of our true permeability field. And then here we have different realizations of different, different MCMC realizations of different maps. And again, we would have, we would have produced thousands of these maps. Uh, they all agree in generally that the gradient of permeability, uh, but each of them is individually uh, uh, fairly noisy. But when we average over them, we actually get a, a posterior mean permeability field uh, that isn't perfect, but is, is actually remarkably good at, at you know, reconstructing uh, the permeability field, field and the, the, the gradient uh, from the bottom left corner to the upper right corner. Um, you, know, you, could, you might fault that you know, there's some nuances that are wrong in here, but again, remember this is essentially done with nine data points. Uh, moving on, this is again a simulated data experiment with a uh, true permeability field. In this case, it's down here in the uh, bottom right corner. But now we're, we're going to start with a, uh, a much less simple permeability field. So, so one that's more likely to be realistic, you know, not just a simple gradient, but a, um, a more complex spatial pattern. And here we can see. Uh, different realizations in the Markov random field predictions, and then it's over post overall posterior mean. And then comparing that to the alternative, this GP permeability, which would be the Gaussian, prom Gaussian process version of that permeability, uh, which again is what we get if we uh, model this based on uh, some spatial covariance function. And we can see that the uh, Markov random field actually captures nuances of the uh, true permeability field that are a bit smoothed over in the Gaussian process. The Gaussian process version actually tends to, uh, because it's based on spatial covariance, tends to, to be very, very uh, aggressive in its smoothing sometimes. Um, but either way, both of these actually do show some capability of reconstructing the spatial pattern. And then the, this last slide then shows applying this to, to real data where we don't actually know the true uh, permeability field. And so we're trying to reconstruct that. Uh, and this is a case where we had these I's are injection wells, the P's are the pumps, and these times here, the monitoring wells showing, uh, I believe this is showing the time uh, till we first, uh, time of first arrival, and kind of showing that it's able to, um, move quickly along the bottom edge, uh, moves particularly slow through the center. Can I capture some of those patterns uh, in the posterior field? Um, yeah, uh, I'm not going to, in this series of videos, I'm not going to dive into the actual implementation of these sorts of models, but just mostly uh, lay out to folks that, that these approaches exist. Uh, they follow the same concepts of our state space models. Uh, and and that you know, to me, I, I always like examples like this that just show that um, 
the, the things like this are even possible. The idea that you can reconstruct a spatial map of, of uh, uh, you know, in this case, permeabilities or, or some sort of physical properties or, or any other um, response, you know, often using, you know, a fairly small number of uh, points of data and, you know, combined in this case with some understanding of the process from the process model. That's it, and, and with, after this video, we're gonna then move on to uh, talking about uh, spatial data where we actually have area as an attribute uh, instead of just point data at a point.